Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together. Alright, so I'm looking at some functions today. So if you haven't subscribed, please just hit that subscribe button, okay? Right, so let's look at the questions that we've got. They say sketch, the sketch below rather shows the graph of f of x which is uh, minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. And they say g of x is ax plus q. And the angle of inclination of the graph is g of g, rather, is 135 in the direction of the positive x-axis. Okay, and they say p is the point of intersection between f and g, right? And they say g is a tangent of the graph at f, of f, rather, at p. Right, now let's quickly have a look at these questions. Right, so the first thing that they want us to do there is uh, to calculate the coordinates of the turning point of the graph of F. Now, remember, guys, um, you can do this in one of two ways, right? So when we're looking at the turning point, in this case, we can simply say, well, we know that the turning point or the X value of the turning point is minus B over 2A, right? And in this case, remember that our B value is negative 5 and our A value is negative 2, right? So that's going to be negative, okay, minus 5 divided by 2 times, in this case, negative 2, right? So in this case, we, we, we get uh, that's minus 5 over 4, right? So that's our X value for the turning point. And of course, because they're looking for the coordinates, so what we're going to do for the y value of the turning point, we're going to say it's equal to f of minus 5 over 4. So we're going to substitute negative 5 over 4, which is the x value of our turning point to the original equation. So this is going to be minus 2 times. Okay, minus 5 over 4 squared. Okay, that's minus 5 times negative 5 over 4. Okay, and the last portion is plus 3, right? Okay, so this is plus 3. Right, so let's see what do we get for that value. So that's going to be negative 2 into negative 5 over 4, right? And we square that. All right, and this is plus, uh, or rather minus 5 into negative 5 over 4. Okay, All right, let's just get that right. Okay, this is plus 3. Okay, and we get 49 over 8. So that's our y value. So that's 49 over 8. Please verify for me. Uh, just in case so that we do not get an answer that is not correct. Okay, right. But it does seem like that is our answer. Okay, so that is our uh, y value for the turning point. So which means our turning point in this case would definitely be negative 5 over 4 as well as 49 over 8. Now, another way to get the turning point, remember, what we can simply do, we know that at the turning point, the derivative of f, right, uh, in this case would be equal to zero. So remember that the gradient uh, of the, uh, you know, of the graph at uh, the turning point would be equal to zero. So in this case, uh, remember that our full equation f of x is equal to negative 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. So when we take the derivative, remember the jump down minus 1 rule, right? So we're going to end up with minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. And so what you'll have there is negative 4x is equal to 5. And we're going to divide both sides by negative 4. And so x again is minus 5 over 4. Okay, so that's negative 5 over 4, which is exactly the same uh, answer that we had. And of course, to get the y value, you do exactly what we did over there, substitute it back into the original equation. 
All right, so that is how the cookie crumbles. All right, the next one, they say to us, calculate the coordinates of P, the point of contact of F and G. Right, now I want you to please note in this case. Now note that the, the two graphs are meeting at that point. So what does that mean? Uh, P, or rather G, is the tangent of the graph of F. So meaning the gradient of F at that point P must be equal to the gradient of this graph of G. What am I simply saying? That if we were to take F prime of P, that point P, this would be equal to the gradient. And remember that the gradient there, they've put it as A, right? So in this case, it would be equal to A. All right, I hope I'm making sense, guys. So the derivative of X or rather of F at P would be equal to the gradient. Now, in this case, the gradient of uh, G can be obtained in the following way, right? So remember that whenever we've got an angle of elevation and remember we have to measure it from the positive side of your X axis, right? Uh, so meaning if they've given us the angle from this side, we always measure it from uh, the right hand side going anti-clockwise. Okay, so please uh, keep that in mind. You know, whenever we are calculating, we need to keep that in mind, right? So M would be equal to the tangent, right, of our angle. In this case, our angle is 135. So that's 10, 135. That gives us negative 1. So in this case, what it simply means is that the gradient of F, right, at that point P would be equal to negative 1. Please keep that in mind, right? So let's do 6.2. So we're going to find, in this case, the gradient of uh, the graph of F should be equal to negative 1, which is the gradient of our tangent there, right? So we're going to have minus 4x minus 5 is equal to negative 1. So we're going to find the x value where the gradient on the graph of f is equal to negative 1. So that's going to be minus 4x. Okay, when we take the 5 to the other side, it becomes positive. So this is equal to positive 5 minus 1, which is 4. Okay, we're going to divide both sides by negative 4. Okay, and so x would be equal to negative 1. So which means uh, the x value at p is negative 1, right? Now, how do I find the y value at p, right? All I'm going to do, okay, right, I'm going to say f of negative 1 because remember, they intersect at that point, Right, so I'm going to simply say f of negative 1, right, so that's minus 2 times negative 1 squared minus 5 times negative 1 plus 3. And in this case, um, what are we going to get there? Uh, so this is going to give us negative 2 um, uh, plus 5, so that's 8 minus 2, so that gives us 6, right? Okay, so... That means that the point P has got the coordinates negative 1 and 6. And please remember to always evaluate, um, you know, your coordinates uh, if whether they correspond to what you have. That's in the second quadrant. So definitely the X value is negative and the Y value is positive. All right. Now let's go to the next one. They say hence or otherwise determine the equation of G. Now, remember, for G, we already got the, the gradient to be negative 1. Okay, so they said that G of X is AX plus Q. So we're going to look for the Q value. But we know that Q, Q uh, G rather, passes through that point there. Right, so for 6.3, what we're going to do is we're going to take G of X. We know that the gradient is negative 1. Right, so that's going to be negative 1x, right, plus q. So to get the q value, I'm going to substitute uh, for that point there. So it means g of negative 1 
So everywhere I see X, I'm going to put negative 1. Please be careful of those signs there. We already had a negative, but we are substituting negative 1 for X, right? Plus Q, which is equal to 6. Okay, and please note when they say hence, all right, it means we, we can use the previous result to obtain the answer. So I'm going to take uh, uh, that to the other side. So it means that's equal to 5. So that's 6 minus 1, which is equal to 5. So Q is equal to 5. So it means that G of X would simply be minus X plus 5. All right. Now, almost the conclusion of this question. They say determine the values of D, right, for which the line KX is equal to negative x plus d will not intersect the graph of f. Now, what I want you to note is that that line kx, all right, k of x, has got the same gradient as g of x. Now, here's what I want you to appreciate. There's g of x, and, and now we just found out that it passes through the point where, uh, or rather the y-intercept is 5, right? So g of x is able to just touch the graph of f. So meaning if you were to take the graph of g of x, right, and bring it below 5 or rather have that y-intercept below 5, what happens? The graph would now not touch the graph of f once, but it would uh, touch the graph of f twice. It no longer becomes a tangent, right? So if you were to bring it down, it no longer becomes a tangent. But now notice this. What happens when I take the graph of G up, right? In this case, it will no longer touch the graph of F, right? So for the same gradient, if I were to just bring it up, right? Okay. So in this case, it would no longer touch the graph of F. So in uh, what it simply means is that if I just push this graph of G up, right, then it will no longer touch the graph of F. So it means that K must be any value that is greater than 5 in this case, right? Once I push it up, in this case, it will no longer touch that graph. So um, for the last question, it means that um, K must be any value that is greater than 5. All right. All right, ladies and gents, I hope that you were able to really thoroughly enjoy that question. Right. Uh, we'll come back with some more questions and I hope that you are preparing for those prelims. And I will also be giving you some uh, nice preparations when it comes to uh, the physical science side of things. Otherwise, from me for now, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.